I just say welcome from my side and I try to provide this uh, technical support if necessary. Uh, I will try helping, assisting with the slides and, and uh, but in general, Ayop will be in charge of the whole discussion and, and um, getting from this uh, uh, introductory round already, I already see that people are in good mood and really share and care also about the environment. So, Perfect. Okay, we, we will, um, can you go to my presentation then, um, Elina? It will, we will be, be talking about resource mobilization, so funding, partnerships. Uh, my name is Job Lom, I will be the moderator. I also, I was also the moderator actually uh, last year when we were in uh, Tallinn. Um, so it's a bit strange now to, to, to live this like uh, online, uh, online world. But actually, it's uh, it's good for our carbon footprint. So uh, it's it saves like uh, it's it uh, serves us the bigger cause. Uh, we will have four uh, short presentations of our um, keynote speakers that will be around ten minutes or fifteen minutes each. Uh, we will be having Kan Aka Dawutsai from uh, Let's Do It World to give also the perspective uh, from Let's Do It World and the support they can offer uh, for fundraising and uh, fund um, resource mobilization. We, uh, you, I think Khan is uh, calling in from uh, Afghanistan, is that right, Khan? Yes, I'm also ah. leading the country, um, Afghanistan, Let's Do It Afghanistan country team. Then we will have a presentation from uh, Adele Salah. Uh, calling us from uh, Yemen. He just did uh, the introduction as well. He will be talking a bit more on grants and also on the portal 365. Then we also have Leon, uh, Leo Lin from uh, Taiwan, I think. Uh, Leon, is that correct? You're calling from uh, Taiwan? Yeah, you're right. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Good. And uh, Leo will be talking more uh, on corporate partnerships and also share some uh, tips and tricks on corporate partnerships with us. And um, let's have like a room for one or two questions after every presentation. So, uh, and then also after all the presentations, we have room also to share your own input. Like, have we forgotten something important about resource mobilization? Which best practice uh, did we not mention? Do you have a best practice yourself? So give us all the input uh, that, you, that you can give on resource mobilization and our partners. And of course we have room for Q and A and we will then end up with a wrap up uh, also of the conclusions and recommendations for, um, for the session. Uh, I also, in the beginning of the chat, I already shared a link with the Acumen Academy organization. Uh, they have a course on non-profit fundraising essentials, so might be interested to uh, take a look at that link also so that you can actually join a course on um, um, yeah, fundraising. I think uh, yeah, it's a very powerful organization, of course, Acumen. I had the pleasure to meet them already, I think back in 2005 when they were just starting. I, I visited them in, um, in uh, New York and it's amazing how, how, how they um, yeah, really were a front runner in impact investment and how they became like a leading organization worldwide in this. So, uh, and now they are uh, having an academy with all kinds of online support systems. So very interesting to take a look at that uh, link. Let me also give a bit of my, um, um my keynote 10 minutes on on my experience in 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 resource mobilization so let me get started uh, with the next slide so my name is job lom i'm a sustainable entrepreneur for already uh, 20 years with the overactive uh, or the overarching um, uh, vision to empower sustainable entrepreneurship beyond borders. So I do that for my public-private uh, NGO partners, uh, be an accelerator for their projects, what they are doing, but also setting up several uh, sustainable ventures myself in Amsterdam, in Colombia, in South Africa. So we have a group of uh, 30 plus professionals in the spectrum of sustainable entrepreneurship, impact measurement, fundraising, 
all the, all those uh, kind of things and it it's it's in the broader sense of the word so we have developed like a, a meaningful marketing campaign to arrange um, or to create awareness around the sustainable development goals by eight colorful um, uh, beaded bracelets that were produced by rural crafters in KwaZulu Natal. And when I think at the end we sold over 500,000 of those bracelets produced by um, hundreds of female crafters, but also raised a lot of like millions of millions of media attention with our uh, partners. So without any marketing budgets, we were able to create millions of millions of media attention. So, uh, so be clever also in your meaningful marketing and uh, use also resources of, of ambassadors and um, organizations. And um, with a lot of impact, we, we, we work for example with Ben and Jerry's and uh, we work with radio stations all providing like uh, support for free to promote our uh, campaign. And um, it also, uh, one other meaningful fundraising activity that I did was just dig it, an initiative to re-clean or cool down the planet by water harvesting. So they, 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 they actually ditch like kennels uh, or, or bunts in, in order to collect the water in uh, deserted areas in Kenya, for example. And with that, we harvest the water, with that vegetation returns, with that evaporation returns, with that clouds return and with that rain returns. So we are really able actually to revitalize Mother Nation again, where, where Mother Nation used to be present. So uh, our friend from um, Kenya can, can tell everything about it, about that, uh, the parks over there that, 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 that are now very deserted but actually once we're like uh, green jungles. So that's what I did up till even uh, for uh, Adele, uh, up till even climbing uh, the Kilimanjaro as a fundraising activity for War Child. I think it's now already the sixth edition. We started it, so we mobilize every year like a hundred people to climb the Kilimanjaro to create awareness and create funds uh, for War Child. So on a yearly basis, around like 350,000, 400,000 euros is collected. But more importantly, we create like 100 ambassadors that they're actually advocating for uh, war child and, and, and uh, creating attention, especially in their communities and the regions and their, their own um, uh, social media communities. So it's a very powerful tool actually to activate 100 ambassadors to spread your message. Then I'm already talking too long, so let's go to the next slide. Uh, about resource mobilization, a bit from my uh, perspective. At the end, it's all about uh, having the right proposition. Um, and, and, and so it starts with your proposition. I started myself Climate Launchpad in Colombia in 2019. Climate Launchpad is an international green business ID competition. It's active in 55 countries and they asked me to start it in Colombia. And the way they do it is that they say, okay, here you have the Dropbox folder, you have the program, you have the communication material, you have our assistance when we are starting the boot camps. Good luck and try to establish your own networks, your own partners, your own finding the entrepreneurs to support. So you really start with nothing, but you already start with like all the communi communication ma material and the track record of Climate Launchpad in this case. So that is actually the same for World Cleanup Day. You know, you really have, you are not starting from nothing. So don't reinvent the wheel. See if you can get the corporate fundraising strategies or presentations from the headquarters, get the instructions from the headquarters and start doing it. Uh, so, so it's important to, to not reinvent the wheel, be very clear on your proposition and also be very clear on the value you can add. So on your target group, like who could be interested in this proposition. And to give a short example, we started with nothing in 2019 uh, the first year we had 111 business IDs. Uh, last year we had 220 uh, business IDs. We also changed the competition completely online. So it was actually much more efficient to organize the competition. 
we started with zero in funding and the first year i think we raised uh, 20,000 last year we raised 60,000 and this morning i took a look at the, all the prospects and we are about to raise 200,000 in uh, euros in in only 3 3 years time so um so 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 there's a lot of uh, possibility also for your world cleanup day and it only started with two partners who supported us with 5000 euro each so you can start very small but think very big and most important about that is also the slogan there we believe in people who believe in their ideas at the end it's all about your authenticity if you believe what you are doing you can convince everyone you know i did it in colombia while i didn't have a network there i don't speak the language um and 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 i managed to set up like a climate launch launchpad competition that now turned out to be a clean tech hub with um, supporting like an epic center of green entrepreneurship okay uh, next slide so uh, then it's about, after your proposition it's of course about people I set up the right team but also looking for the right partners um, who could be interested to support your cause you know which organization could be relevant to support your cause and this is my first meeting the picture that you see there it's with uh, Fundación Bolivar da Vivienda one of the leading foundations in Colombia actually the man in the center is uh, the head of that operation of that uh, Fundación but he is also part of the family so that it's a family owned business and I never met a servant and humble leader like him you know this this, this guy is is awesome you know it, normally in Colombia all of these high uh, net worth individuals they travel with lots of like escorts and police escorts and big SUVs this guy is taking the public transport you know he's really very humble and very servant and on the table in the first meeting February 2019 he said Job you've got my support and until now he has been supported me and actually now we are starting also an accelerator program to continue our support to the to the green entrepreneurs and he's our leading partner in starting the accelerator program so we are really walking hand in hand and they are supporting it via their networks they are also uh, getting more sponsors on board so it's also very important that you get the right context and to give it in the context of colombia i didn't know nobody uh, so to say and there it's a very elite driven organis uh, country everybody knows them from their private schools from the country clubs from the industry organizations so it is very important that's why we started the first day to establish an advisory board with the minister with ex-ministers with ex uh, people from the government ex people from the uh, from the municipalities business people and they gave us all the introductions to the right context in the right organizations because to do it with cold calling you're never going to succeed you know so you really need the right context at the right level to to make this uh, make this work um, and it's also important uh, to build up the ecosystem so you are looking for several kind of partners you are looking for funding partners which could be foundations or governments or private sector partners but you are also looking for strategic allies that support your cause so we work with universities we work with uh, the chamber of commerce we work with uh, b corp we work with all kinds of organizations and every time that we announce our competition we make sure that everybody is sharing our message so with that we reach out to millions of millions of people in colombia without any marketing budget so it's very important to look at a variety of partners and also play that role in the ecosystem and, and and make use of all of their expertise networks connections social media channels you don't have to do save the world uh, by yourself you know you can can do it hand in hand with your partners so be very clear about that uh, next slide 
then it's also the most important thing is actually you have your team, you have your partners, you have your funding, you have your uh, proposition right, uh, but then timing is everything. There has been research actually what made successful startups successful. At the end, it was about all those aspects uh, that I just mentioned, but at the end, it's all about timing. And we were therefore lucky enough that we started in Colombia when there was no nothing around green entrepreneurship and clean tech innovation. So we were actually like the front runners uh, to get it started. While there was, of course, a very much interest from the gov government uh, on a circular economy. And also then a mayor got elected from Bogota, the first female lesbian le uh, mayor of uh, Bogota from a green party. And she said, and she knew that they had to work towards the sustainability and quality of life of the city. So she completely embraced our ID around green entrepreneurship and uh, clean tech innovation and creating this circular economy. And that is actually bigger than ever now also with the blessing in disguise from the COVID. You know, everybody is talking about the green deal. Everybody is talking about the green recovery. Everybody knows and is aware that we have to start thinking and doing things differently than we've done in the past. And uh, also when this small fever is over, we have the real problems to deal with that are, is, is, is climate change and inequality in the world, which is only unfortunately, uh, especially the inequality growing because of COVID, you know, and our selfish behavior to only save our own uh, country at the moment and don't look any further. So in that sense, timing is everything. And we were lucky enough that we were a front runner. So, but I think also for World Cleanup Day, the plastic soup, you know, there's a lot of like attention to uh, the cause to clean up the world. And also in the Netherlands, you see it also with um, money that they are actually putting on the, on, on cans now, on bottles, on, so there's a lot of pressure also on the producers. So there's a lot of like, extended producer responsibility at the moment. So also the Coca-Colas, the Red Bulls, who is actually one of my clients, have to act. Uh, so, 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 so timing is everything. Next slide. Um, and finally, it's, it's about your mission, about your slogan. You know, you really have to have like a single cause, you know, like what is your single cause and keep it very, very simple. You know, we changed Climate Launchpad into a clean tech hub to drive green entrepreneurship and clean tech innovation. That's what we do. World Cleanup Day is cleaning up the world. That's what you do. So I think already sometimes it's too complicated with World Cleanup Day and Let's Do It World, you know, be very clear on your positioning, very clear on your branding, on your slogan and your purpose in, uh, with your organization and also with your partnership proposition. You know, really in the beginning, we had like three levels of partnerships, you know, like all kinds of added values, but now we um, actually made it simple one way that you can support as a company it costs you 10,000 euros we give you visibility of your brand we give you access to innovations we give you a leading position in the ecosystem and uh, together we actually drive uh, green entrepreneurship a clean tech innovation that's it and if you want to join us you are very welcome if you don't want to join us be our friend you know you can join in many ways but you know, so keep it also for yourself. Keep it very simple and keep it um, your proposition clear. So next slide. Was it all easy? Of course not. You know, I've been a social and sustainable entrepreneur for over 20 years. Um, and every year my bank account starts with a zero or minus uh, a couple of hundred of euros. So it keeps and it needs a lot of passion personality drive and grit to convince it you also really need like if you want to do fundraising you have to be a fundraising type of guy and uh, so also it has to be your personality you know i love to 
I get a lot of energy of meeting new people, building partnerships, creating partnerships and, and, and being successful also in that. So it fits my personality. It fits my passion to empower green entrepreneurship or sustainable entrepreneurship uh, beyond borders. So, so it fits, it fits me, but it's not easy. You know, it's, it's not, it's not about the number of times that you get hit down, but the numbers of times that you actually get up. And to give an example of that, I'm already in this field for 20 years. And actually now uh, I see, I start noticing that I get funding from UNDP, from GIZ, from uh, Coca-Cola, from Alpina, from bigger corporates. So, of course, I did my bits and pieces and um, I survived over the last couple of years. But now I can really see that all the planting, all the seeding, all the, you know, we are now actually ready to start harvesting. So, but also I think that offers an opportunity with uh, World Cleanup Day as well. You know, we are here to stay. And especially also with the sustainable development goals, we all now have this direction towards 2030. So also make sure that you build up this database, you know, like, uh, last year in 2019, we also approached, for example, the British Embassy. Then we were too early stage. Now I got a call two weeks ago from the British Embassy saying like, Job, we received your newsletter. Uh, we see that you are starting an accelerator program. Actually, that fits more our proposition because Climate Launchpad was too early stage. So you really have to start investing in building that uh, long-term relationship and building up this database, this growing database of people that join your cause. Uh, next slide. Uh, then there's also a lot of guidance. I already mentioned it in the beginning. I just received this email uh, yesterday but also Acumen is actually uh, offering a non-profit fundraising essentials. Here you see the link. I also put a link in the chat uh, this morning. So take a look at it because it can help you and it can give you like a aha or give you the, set, the confidence to continue with it. So check it out, please. And at the end, you... No, no, next slide, uh, final slide. It's, uh, it's, it's all also about luck. You know, you need that luck. You know, I needed that luck to the, have Fundacion Bolivar Dafa Vienda saying at the table, Job, we will support you. You know, that if, if I would not have gotten that um, support, I would not have maybe continued or maybe found, found other partners. So you need a, a bit of luck, but you can also create your own luck. So it's really also by putting a lot of efforts and positive energy into the universe and, and be open for opportunities uh, and be open uh, for that luck. So that was a bit my presentation. I don't know if there are one or two questions from the audience before we continue with the next speaker, which will be Khan Dawutsai. Uh, we can take one or two questions. How to make a choice from whom to take funding and from not from whom not to make your yeah, uh, with your cut feeling with your heart you know like uh, for example we with climate lounge pet we don't take any money from petrol companies and actually we got like an offer last year uh, in the beginning of the year while we were still very poor you know we are actually still very poor but then also we had one petrol company actually saying like okay we can support you for 1500 euros or something so and then of course also the money was too low but also it was a petrol company that was not seriously and genuinely interested so in that sense you have to be very ethical in that also we will work with our advisory board so also if we have any doubt then we we also discuss it with our advisory board but for example I also believe that you have to work together with the enemy, you know, if you want to change the world, you have to change companies like Shell, you know, and we are pushing and pulling and, you know, Shell already for 20 years, but now they're finally also because they have to, are making the shift, you know, so, so also don't be too brutal with it because actually these corporates and companies need our support. And that's also what we see, for example, with, 
with Climate Launchpad, we have this bottom-up innovation and companies can't innovate anymore. So that's also why we work with Coca-Cola. And if we can provide a good solution for recyclable bottles for Coca-Cola, then of course we can make a lot of impact. And, and there are a lot of solutions out there. <clears throat> so we just have to speed up the innovation wow. process. May I have a question? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a quick question. Uh, you know, you, you work with a lot of international uh, company enterprises, I would say. And so I think that we just see any potential synergy if, you know, you introduce those uh, entities of C, I mean, oversee, you know, uh, entity to work together. For example, like uh, California, Calif I mean, the, the French leader introduced uh, uh, California Taiwan to work with me before. I thought that's really helpful. I, I thought, I mean, some leader we have here were probably interested in that kind of uh, uh, opportunity. And we are looking for some synergy here, you know? Maybe you introduce, uh, not just we got the, uh, you know, got a fund or something, but it's more like we, we together work in the border, work in the border range, then uh, you also can increase your fundraising on your side. I mean, that, that's just a thought, but what do you think about that? My question was just that, do you see that's possible or? It's no, and I think it's essential, you know, like uh, that you have to learn uh, from each other and also build like, uh, like on an international level, you work with Decathlon. They are a very decentralized organization, but that it should be your first approach for Decathlon in Taiwan, because then you can say, okay, this is what your company is already doing. Would you also like to join us on a local level? And to give an uh, example of that in, um, in my own case with, World, uh, with um, uh, Climate Launchpad, Climate Launchpad received uh, funding from Iris Aid uh, for Africa to do a rollout in Africa of six different countries. So the first that I approached last year was the Iris Embassy to saying like, okay, you are supporting already in Africa. Can't we build up like an organization or a, a partnership here in um, Colombia as well? With the result that now Iris Aid for next year, for this year, will support six African countries plus Colombia. So that really helps, you know. So really, I think there should be within World Cleanup Day a lot of knowledge sharing saying, okay, these are very important partners in a global organization or in other countries. Please connect with them on a local level because you immediately have that warm entry. So let's go to the next uh, speaker, Khan. Thank you. Would Thank you, also to yes. provide the perspective from, um, yes. from uh, Let's Do It World on a global level to also see how we can, how people do not start from nothing and do not have to reinvent the wheel, but really uh, continue, yeah, can build on your experience on a global level. Thank you. I'm just sharing my presentation from my computer. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Yop. And um, uh, my name is Han uh, Daudzai, and I'm the uh, head of resource mobilization for Let's Do It, and uh, uh, and also like you know bringing expertise from my own work uh, as a director of an organization who was doing um, work in similar area. At the same time, my work from the United Nations that I have been uh, doing, uh, supporting NGOs to be more sustainable, and how they could come up with more diversified resources and also like, you know, sustainability idea. And at the same time, um, I've been uh, assigned by the um, uh, Swedish Committee for Afghanistan. This is a very big organization, almost uh, managing around $40 million per, per, per annual funding and uh, to help them to develop or to make the resource mobilization is a core function of their organization because to systemize uh, the first thing is that, you know, that uh, the resources they received and at the same time that you diversify the resources because uh, most of the, um, most of the uh, fund they were receiving from um, official development fund from developing cooperation and that's more politicized. So we mean that, you know, if, if something is done with the country and one country has stopped their resource in that country, so the organization will be remain vulnerable and they can, can, can cut off the operation. So therefore, uh, we work to establish in, um, make the resource of mobilization of core function of the uh, organization. Also like, you know, bringing all the 
uh, key steps and also like you know processes together to make sure that you know that we have um, keep what we need to achieve and also like you know lead to sustainability of the organization. So this is what uh, we have been uh, I've been working uh, uh, in my experiences with other organizations. So in um, uh, actually in 2020, last year this time. <laughs> There was discussion on the uh, resource mobilization, and I, uh, with the Let's Do It, and I offered my expertise that you know I can support the Let's Do It organization and uh, resource mobilization, and also like you know, uh, being with the Let's Do It um, since uh, 2015 or 2014, and uh, I see that you know that uh, the Let's Do It uh, movement, uh, uh, you know, together with the country team, that they are like moving from from team approach to more organizational approach. So therefore. Uh, you know that you know. Uh, therefore, we wanted to change a little bit the mentality about the fundraising towards more uh, a comprehensive process where we can we can bring all the processes together and also support the organization. It will be like you know capacity building and it will be like you know more uh, institutional building, like you know the new organization. At the same time, like you know grant management and fundraising guidelines, and at the same time uh, donor reporting because uh, when we are getting money, that you know we are responsible for. Uh, to provide back the accountability in reporting to the donors. So this is something that, you know, bring us to uh, start with the resource mobilization. I don't know how, I, I, I'm not able to change my slides, right? Oh, sorry, yeah, now I've done it. Uh, okay, we, um, you know, as I mentioned uh, that, uh, you know, we were, um, in the past, we were very much dependent on the fundraising and uh, you know, uh, when we move from the, uh, you know, individual or team approach to organization approach, uh, there is what required to that we have a resource mobilization, a comprehensive process that, you know, to make sure uh, the organization sustainability. And that's why that, you know, that we, uh, we started the resource mobilization with aim to um, develop internal capacity, uh, building relationship with the key donors in organization and adapting a system that support resource mobilization in order to achieve uh, you know, diversify uh, resources from um, from uh, from development assistance and also like you know from uh, private uh, corporate funding and as, as well as foundations and also like individual donation to make the organization sustainable. So this was what we uh, we purpose for the resource mobilization to be um, uh, to be established within the list. Do it. When we um, we agreed to start the resource mobilization, and then we start to uh, look at that, you know, that we should uh, be coming more or less with a plan that you know that that could support what we we are aimed for the resource mobilization, and then we start to work start work on the planning and the planning, you know, with the main purpose to um, uh, to develop a comprehensive approach, identify and set out the system processes and activities. Uh, to uh, identify financial and can resource to mobilize uh, financial and can resources uh, to achieve the LDI, LDIW uh, goals and objective. You mean that you know that we um, uh, we are not only looking for money, but you know we are looking to build a system and, and, and processes that you know that support resource mobilization. So it means that you know it's coming from the internal organization uh, capacity development towards that like a more donor relationship and also like you know. Uh, working with the different donors and also like in the different other processes that to make sure that you know that we um, we are uh, like you know managing the whole process of the cycle, uh, not only fundraising. Uh, so this was uh, the main purpose of our plan that you know we work on the uh, organization and, and then uh, with the key objective like you know that institutionalized resource mobilization is a key function uh, of the organization, like you know that we. Um, key function of the organization like you know that that uh, we are all the expert will come it means that you know that when we do um, uh, you know capacity development so it means that you know this will be like you know the source of expertise that we can share it and, and mobilize it in in the country team level as well like you know if we can provide uh, more an at the integrated approach that you know that we uh, we together uh, develop the capacity because the country team are like you know the integrated um, you know part of the list do it work so that's something that you know we are looking for uh, the second objective we plan to be uh, like you know mobilize funding from diverse sources for LDY programs in operation to ensure the sustainability of the organization in reduce its dependency on single sources of funding uh, currently uh, the LDI uh, W they are um, the list do it and they are uh, I think that they're very much limited uh, to towards like you know the uh, student development cooperation and as well like you know some private foundation. But we 
I think we need to work to um, to 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 uh, to break this dependency and this uh, limited resources, and then we can reach to more like what Job mentioned that you know more foundation and corporate funding that you know to ensure that you know we have a diversified funding for our programs. Uh, and then we also um, have the other objective that we have for it that you know to support and advise to ensure adequate capacity for resource mobilization across the organization especially in the area of proposal development grant management and program implementation in reporting uh, we we think that you know the resource mobilization mean uh, we mean a comprehensive process so it means that you know it's not only like you know fundraising or funding bringing funding to organization but it's a more uh, process that you know to support interlake each other because if we, you we have like you know the resource mobilization if you have money uh, get money from donors, so it means that you know we need to have sufficient capacity to to uh, to spend that money according to what we have committed, and also like you know according to the the international standards and guidelines, like you know that that is uh, like you know to increase or to ensure our 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 credibility and transparency and accountability to relevant donors, uh, and also like you know to our own objective and aim that we have. So this is something that you know that we uh, we also to make sure that this capacity exists because. Uh, because uh, uh, you know, fund receiving a funding from uh, and then um, managing those funding and then um, reporting back those to uh, to the to the concerned entities or sort of internal organization management. So this is very important that you know, we have all those processes and capacity to 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 effectively manage those resources that we receive. Uh, the other important aspect of the resource mobilization that we uh, we uh, we outlined that you know that um, um, you know um, you know what were the basis of the resource mobilization for the organization. So uh, we um, uh, you know the uh, the direction of the resource mobilization plan was based on the organization vision, mission, and core values, and also the strategic plan. Um, in the IW partnership policy, which provides the guideline principle and general framework of the partnership um, uh, uh, of LDI and just member a member organization like you know the country teams, and then we have the fundraising guidelines, which is very very important. Which you have mentioned that you know that um, uh, we are doing a very sensitive work, and we we do not uh, just looking for money, but you know, but we are getting money for people from people who are like you know which not affect our, our credibility. So this is something that, you know, that we need to make sure that, you know, that um, uh, the money we get or the policy we have that, you know, to receive money from those that are a credible organization, because some of the companies may be like, you know, very much building credibility in our work. So that's why that, you know, we don't want to, uh, to, to be in that situation that, you know, to affect our credibility. Therefore, that, you know, the, 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 uh, the grant management guidelines that is very very important aspect of the resource mobilization that we base on that and then there is other policy and applicable law on uh, regulation that you know like you know apply like you know and fundraising issues like you know that you know and also that resource mobilization the country policy how to mobilize resources from its donors you know how donor policy apply on those things so this is something that you know we thought that you know this is the key um key basis for this uh, that you know we need to make sure that we are we are developing this plan so we make sure that those 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 bases should be con uh, taken in account uh, and the uh, the other the next step was that you know that we need to um actually develop uh, you know um a resource mobilization um uh, you know team like you know for example uh, this is starting from the management like you know we have we have established the funding funding steering group which is uh, consisting of senior manager for making the uh, necessary funding related decision and follow up so it means that you know that uh, they are the group that you know they are really directing the resource mobilization uh, work on agenda you know at the organization level so it is uh, consisting that the executive director the head of resource mobilization and also the head of uh, director in finance and administration and at the same time the head of the network development so they are the key people who um, who run the who run the the funding agenda within the organization in taking this decision and this is something that you know um, in all aspect of the resource mobilization like for example when we get um, you know funding offer we review the organization credibility all the policies guidelines and after that we are come up with a decision that should be go and get funding from this organization or not and this is the group that do decide on this uh, and then we have uh, just you mentioned the uh, fundraising advisory group this is uh, a very very important expert group that you know that we have uh, to 
we have to establish still we are we are working on this to establish this group uh, to provide um, you know advice on the um, and expert advice and fundraising fundraising issues and you know, they should have expertise on all aspects of the like you know corporate funding how this work and also like you know fundraising and also uh, crowdfunding and also so they are uh, they are the people who can provide more advice and technical support to this mobilization to enable us to uh, to keep taking in account all those tools and resources that exist and also like you know that you know, provided by the expert group and then we are uh, we um uh, we have uh, established a resource mobilization team they are responsible for driving and coordinating resource mobilization across the organization ensuring implementation of um, fsg or funding steering group um, um, discussion and also like you know the um, uh, fundraising group uh, recommendation like you know what we have like you know the 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 the, uh, the partnership policy and also like you know the advisory group so these are uh, this that the, the resource mobilization team will work to uh, take recommendations or uh, or direction from those uh, those uh, expert advice from those group and uh, and also like you know the decision of the funding study group to implement it and then we have the um, re proposal development team and this is casting of our team uh, members and uh, representative of the program finance section and assigned by proposal development so it means that you know we uh, should have an you know, integrated approach in terms of like you know um, engaging uh, all the key departments within the organization like you know finance and also that you know the program and at the same time resource mobilization uh, people to to come up to work together to develop a proposal for a donor so this is something that you know that currently we are working to um, establish a team or identify competent people who who work with the country teams or who are at the headquarters so it means that you know they will be working on different granting resources to um to develop proposal uh and then the uh, we have the other process like you know that uh, the grant management and this is something that you know when uh, we um we get the resources and and you know like you know funding from a donor the contract has been signed so uh, the job of the resource mobilization is like, you know, team is uh, now um, hand over to the, the grant management team. We are grant management team is responsible to uh, to um, to work with uh, with resource mobilization and also the, the program implementation and also uh, finance to ensure that, you know, they, they take all those measures and also like, you know, to start work and, and, and do the project according to the qualities uh, of the organization um, and also objective and also like in the quality required quality. So this is something that you know that is um, a next process, and also like you know this is consisting of like you know uh, resource mobilization person program team and also finance and monitoring and evaluation team. So they come together and they can join the uh, the grant ma grant management team. Uh, so this is the uh, resource mobilization process that we have, um, you know, established at the funding state group, and then we have resource mobilization team, and then proposal development team, and then after that we have grant uh, management, uh, grant management, and, and proposal team, uh, and then uh, you know the funding advisory group is very, um, you know, more or less uh, uh, independent group that could provide uh, advice in each process that you know we are taking, uh, you know, during this resource mobilization process. So this is something that you know they will. Um, they will advise us yeah uh, we initially come up with the um, um, organization capacity assessment in terms of like institutional capacity grant management financial management program implementation communication planning and reporting and organization observing capacity so that has been a simple exercise that we took uh, took in place um, last year and uh, we uh, actually, we come up with that, you know, with this result that, you know, in some year that, you know, the list rate organization is stronger, have stronger capacity. And some year they have medium capacity and some year they're low capacity. So it means that, you know, we take in like, you know, the area which is with low capacity and also like, you know, the medium capacity to build up like, you know, for example, um, uh, during this pandemic, because, uh, you know, we started to work uh, to develop, you know, an institutional capacity because, you know, the list do, uh, list do it should have you know a grant management guidelines so we work with that one to develop those guidelines and also uh, you know that, that the uh, proposal development uh, you know we are thinking that you know this year we will be working more on proposal development capacity building within the team and on the country team so these are showing that you know that um, uh, some of the area that you know like for example uh, credibility like you know among the donors ldi uh, network is a very credible network and has more credibility uh, with all the 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 uh, you know partners and everything and then like you know, for example uh, diversity of funding it is not that much because we have very limited funding sources and that is something that you need to be work out more uh, and also like you know um, 
fundraising and grant management related guidelines like you know it is in the middle because uh, you know there are some some sort of guidelines but it was not uh, very much uh, comprehensive to to take all the processes so that is something that you know we have been uh, working on that to improve that one at the same time like you know communication and marketing marketing materials uh, you know this was also very important to um, to take in account like you know when we are doing you know fundraising and also we need to uh, to promote our services as well in order to reach to more people and more followers and more audience um uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you i just would like to we are being like time conscious and okay okay I'd like you to wrap up within a minute or so okay sure uh, and this is actually, um, uh, you know, the funding that, um, you know, in 2020, because you see that, you know, we're limited donors and we have to uh, work more on this. And um, yes, and then, um, you know, what we have done in, uh, in 2020 that, you know, we have, um, we have developed uh, LDIW um, funding gui guideline, fundraising guideline, and we done, uh, you know, grant management guideline, and also that, you know, we develop um, a real mobilization plan and also that donor mapping and database. So this is something that, you know, we have done to spend in the pandemic process, and then we are not putting all these in action. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are looking for the next step, like, you know, that, you um, uh, to establish the funding targets in KPI that this year, and at the same time, like you know, uh, start working that you know on donor relations, uh, call for proposal management that you know that we receive we'll call for proposal. So how we we should establish a process how to manage those those work on a integrated approach to link and engage country teams in resource mobilization, uh, and also like you know RM capacity uh, development at the HQ and country level. So this is something that you know I think the the uh, the the upcoming. Um, uh, for this year, we have to put this and also like, you know, we will be very much, um, you know, looking uh, for the team feedback, like, you know, uh, when we are com starting communication with the country teams uh, in order to uh, to get their their their, their uh, feedback and resources that and how we work together and what are the key uh, that, you know, that, you know, that we have been engaged, like, you know, we are saying that in establishing up DI funding targets and KPI and also um, uh, at the same time, work on an integrated approach to link and engage country teams in, in resource mobilization. And this will be like, you know, our key task. At the same time, we were managing like, you know, our funding target. So that is, uh, sorry if this is too long, but it was uh, just, I was a uh, wrap up. So if there is any question, uh, so feel free to ask. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Khan. Are there, um, and, and so what you also see that it, resource mobilization is, is not an easy job. So it takes a lot of like efforts and uh, work behind the scenes to create this enabling environment, eh? to get all documentation in place, to get the strategy in place, to get the team in place, to get um, instructions in place. Um, so it takes a lot of efforts actually uh, to do that. Um, Adele, can I give uh, the yes. floor to you? Um, Adele Sala will also tell us a little bit more on, on, on Grant. Uh, grants and uh, grants fundraising, as well as the portal uh, 365. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, uh, for everyone, and uh, it's great that we we had the presentation of Khan like just like finished because I feel like my presentation will be maybe I will repeat a lot of things uh, that he mentioned, but from maybe a different perspective. So it will it will add to to what Khan just uh, presented. Uh, so. Is, it, is everyone able to see it? The, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah great. So, uh, yeah, um, uh, my session will be uh, in geo funding pyramid and how to get as much donors funding as you can possibly handle. And um, um, just to give an idea, I, I, I have worked with many local NGOs in Yemen and, and many international NGOs. I worked for the World Bank, for WHO. Uh, I worked for Oxfam uh, Great Britain as a program manager. And then I established one of the largest NGOs in Yemen, uh, uh, and I, I will present what we have learned during that. So we established Portal 365, which is a startup that is helping NGOs to understand the funding and how to go and how to improve in, in terms of funding. But in general, I will go to the theory, like by, by the end of the session, I expect that everyone would understand more about the funding pyramid and, and the funding model and how to establish a funding plan and strategy. And usually I start like this by, by introducing the idea of the pyramid, is, is, uh, uh, which is like, have you ever built a pyramid? And why exactly the pyramid? Because it has been like sustainable for more than 5,000 years. But, but also the, um, we had a lot of questions around the pyramid is that although there, there have been a lot of natural disasters, 
a lot of uh, like um, man-made uh, conflicts, a lot of uh, wars, a lot of regimes changing, but no one could ever um, distract the pyramid, which means that the way it was built, it was built around sustainability. So just to reflect on what we what we are talking about today is that I believe that each NGO is having two strategies. They are all related to the programs. So we have the program strategy that is mainly targeting the beneficiaries, the people who will be benefiting from, from the assistance or from the services, from the campaigns that we are going to do. And also the funding strategy that is targeting the money, the funding, the donors, and how we get, how we receive the money. So when we develop a, a, a strategy for the NGO, we need to consider both the funding and the program. And usually uh, the, the program strategy is focusing on beneficiaries, the families, communities, service providers, service facilities, both policies, technologies, uh, systems and authorities. But the, while the funding is, is targeting the funding, the money, negotiation with donors, proposals, NGO uh, donor fit, which is, uh, we will go uh, uh, deeper on that and how to find and identify the donors. I believe that uh, uh, like the NGO is usually when we build the capacity of an NGO, it goes through five levels, uh, starting from the opportunistic level to the reactive, to proactive, scalable, sustainable. So we will never, we will never find a scalable NGO before it became proactive. We can never find a, an NGO that is proactive before being reactive and so on. And, and usually those like like those levels usually the ngo is project based once the ngo is becoming proactive it becomes pro programs based and usually at this level we need to hire a specialized teams which means that if we are working on education we need to have education experts if we are working on health we need health experts if we if we want uh, if we are working on on wash water sanitation hygiene we need uh, civil engineers and wash experts uh, if we are working on biodiversity uh, cleaning campaigns, then we need experts. Yes, so uh, we need the strategies at all levels, but for sure we will we will like if 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 someone ask is asking when are we or when do we need the funding strategy? I will say from day one, as long as we started the NGO, we started the initiative or the campaign, then we need to start from day one preparing for the funding strategy. Uh, so uh, what about the funding strategy? Usually the funding, unfortunately, the, the, for NGOs, funding is the only sustainability model for NGOs. Um, uh, so funding usually is, is going through a cycle of implementation, evaluation, reporting, learning, program strategy, then again, how to feed into uh, improving the funding. Why we need the funding strategy? Because we need not to rely on just one or two sources of, of funding. I have been advising hundreds of NGOs in many places of the world, in many countries, uh, during the, the like the last 10 years, and I noticed that those who are relying on one or two, usually like something happen with the donor, sometimes happen uh, like with you, between you and the donor, then at the end you, you find like the NGO without funding. And usually there are 10 types of funding models. We have the grants, crowdfunding, donations, memberships of the alumni, special events, sales of products, provision of trainings and services, sponsorships, government, and sometimes the, the, the founder is the donor, but usually every NGO uh, uh, is, is usually successful on only like few models. There is no NGO who, who that is really able to, to have all the models like successful at the same time. So you need to prioritize what, what like your capacity, your team's capacity, if you are the founder or the manager of the NGO, including your core staff, what, what are you good at? If you are good at crowdfunding, then keep pushing for improving the crowdfunding and then start later like working on the grants. But if you are great in the, on the grants, then work on the grants more, invest a lot on the grants before you go to the crowdfunding. But, but at the same time, you need, you need to consider at least two to three models, especially during the first three to five years of, of, of the NGO uh, life. Uh, so we need to prioritize uh, funding models. For us in Portal 365, we usually focus only on grants, so we don't talk about any other uh, funding models. Uh, the funding strategy, I believe that each strategy should consider the, 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 this like inverted pyramid. 
So it's like the funnel. Usually there is no difference between the marketing or the fundraising because usually they are going around the same funnel. You need to you need to search for your prospects. You need to search for for those who would be like who could be at at any point of time your supporters, your customers, or your uh, donors. Uh, so usually we need to search and identify the donor prospects, and then we need to engage and qualify. So we need to make sure that the donor is is fit with our NGO. Uh, we need to to find this this fit uh, before we apply. So we search, we uh, search, identify, engage, and qualify. Then we start writing proposals and apply. Why is this important? Because now you, uh, when we have a call for proposal, for example, we see a lot of calls for proposals on everyday basis. But for now, the donors are uh, are facing a lot of difficulties to to uh, select the, the the best NGOs to work with, because now, um, uh, like sometimes the, in in a single call for proposal, there are more than twenty thousand NGO applicants from from many countries. It became really difficult to select the the, the partner, which means that it's not enough to apply from the first time. You need to search and identify. You need to engage and qualify. And then you apply, start, uh, if, if there is a good like uh, response, you could go on negotiation and then uh, like signing agreements and receive funding. So when we see the funnel, sometimes you will talk about like 4,000 donors. You might only find 1,000 that are uh, fit. You need to write 300 proposals. You, sometimes you might have only 60 or less responding. And then if you would be lucky to, to close at least uh, like 10 grants uh, a year, like I'm talking on, on annual basis. You need to repeat this on, on every every year, like as, as a, a kind of uh, like a, a funding plan. In, in marketing, they say that prospecting is, is to find the man with the problem before you, you sell something. Uh, in fundraising, I, I believe that prospecting is to find the donor working for the same problem at the, at the same target location. Um, uh, usually, for 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 us as as NGO leaders, we we need to 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 focus on, like on both sides. We need to to acquire new donors through donor acquisition, and uh, so it's like uh, to do a lot of donor prospecting, and then we need to keep uh, the current donors. We need to make sure that we are we serious enough to keep our current donors. So we need to do a donor retention, and this is through cultivation. Usually, to do the donor retention and cult uh, cultivation, it's like to, to keep the visibility of the donor. You need to have timely reporting. You need to ensure that you are reporting like financially and technically in, in a good shape. And, and um, uh, when I say a good shape, it means that we are accountable, uh, like spending uh, wisely and so on. Um, uh, in, uh, we need. We could invite the donor for like monitoring visits. We need to uh, provide success stories on on a, like timely basis for every uh, agreement, and then we need to document the lessons learned and we share with the donor and we keep the donor informed as much as possible. Uh, this is uh, this is how we we keep the donors like happy and and we keep like retaining the donor. And by the way, no NGO could grow if they are losing every donor they acquire. So it's so acquisition is good, but usually retention is the most important uh, and difficult part of of uh, NGO management. Uh, in terms of acquisition, we just talked about it, which is you need to do the prospecting, the qualifying, the proposals, negotiation, and and the agreements. So uh, like funding is 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 like this, like it's like you are driving with with two with two hearts, with two heads, with with like with two. Uh, uh, concerns. You should not like uh, acquire new donors and keep losing the current donors. You will never be able to establish strong programs if you do if you uh, if you are doing so. Uh, so the donor prospecting, we need to identify uh, the potential donors and then we qualify them. But donor prospecting needs to be proactive. If we are only reactive, it means that we are we we don't know anything about the donor. We just apply like at the last minute. And also, we, we have no idea uh, like uh, what we are really applying for. So we just know at the last time about the deadline. So we prepared a, a, a proposal and we submit, and then we keep seeing, please, please, let's let's hope we get it. But it's not like that. Like once you go deep, you 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 will understand that 
it's not being reactive it's it's a, about being proactive which means that we need to identify the donor ask for the donor make sure that this is donor fit we make sure that this is the best fit idea is the donor working on on, on the same beneficiaries we are working on then we start to to uh, prepare and 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 plan ahead uh, around applying for the proposals we need to do a lot of engagement i will i will i will be faster so how how can we identify the prospecting donors so for example we have we have many sectors like that this is how many donors we have but generally they are repeating in each sector for example i i searched for 4000 donors the, you could you could have a lot of like platforms where you can you can find the database of the donors uh, you you need to qualify these these donors you, you we should not spam them by by the proposals and by emails uh, so we we need to engage and qualify we make sure that we we are fit uh, in capacity geography and strategy also uh, we need to make sure that is it local or international donors uh, usually the donors they are doing uh, also assessment for us they just they keep seeing the risk not the productivity so if we are opportunistic we are high risk low productive so they keep saying no um, and this is how they are rating and they never work with you if you are uh, an eligible like the capacity is less than the they are requesting uh, so for example they keep seeing that uh, no if you are uh, just individual focus if it's team then you become potential available trusted partner and preferred partner um, uh, capacity challenges versus funding uh, usually uh, the, uh, you could be like founder uh, focused uh, sorry uh, you need to make sure that you uh, like the the founder need to 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 work uh, him or herself to apply for for funding to make sure that they are able to do it then it become applicable if you could succeed in one or two proposals then you need to hire a team so that they help you to to make sure that you have a predictable funding and and then you keep working as hiring specialized teams to be to have a repeatable uh, funding and recurrent donors then you need to start automation and tools to make sure that you are scalable and diversifying to become sustainable and I give this uh, case study like from my my own experience that when I I step I, I am the founder of uh, nfdhr.org I established it on 2012 and then I, I was the only one who's doing funding it was like zero zero then I I succeeded so I hired the team I it became productive uh, predictable uh, at 2014 we had three donors with with about half a million USD then we became proactive we uh, like on 2016 we had specialized teams, six programs on water, sanitation, hygiene, health, nutrition, food security, education, peace building, and governance. And then we could we, we were uh, succeeding, like doing repeatable funding from the same donors. Uh, we 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 had like seven donors, but they, they were like recurrent donors. So our fund our annual funding became five million dollar. Then we became scalable, like uh, uh, we started to use automation and tools. Uh, at 2019, we we uh, we closed like we, we worked with more than 22 donors with 14 uh, million US dollars. And now this is our current challenge: how to become sustainable, how to diversify our funding model. We are working on that. I hope this is uh, helpful. I I wish you could also visit us at portal 365. Uh, the uh, org. Uh, maybe if if uh, if I could. Um, uh, if I could just very, very quickly uh, share what is portal and, and how you could benefit out of it. Um, uh, let's see if, if I can share or, or I am almost done. Um, let me see. Uh, yes, so so this is uh, uh, how we, we go to uh, the, the system. This is the system, portal 365. Usually we manage uh, NFDHR with, with this system. Now we have many NGOs around the world using the system. Uh, so this is the pyramid. For example, we have 159 uh, donors. Uh, these are fit with, with uh, like those who have grants, those donors who, who are working in our field. So these are these are the only in, uh, donor fit with, with us. So we try to apply and, and now we are current with, uh, we are working with eight uh, current uh, uh, donors. So we, we have this like the database of the donors. You could search based on your country, based on uh, uh, 
for example, in Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, and so on, you could also search based on the programs. If you are working, like, let's say, on nutrition, water, sanitation, hygiene, shelter, and so on. And also, you can find the grants. You, ca you could start developing proposal through the system. You could bring your team, for example, and who are working with, with you on the proposal. Um, uh, and then you, you could also manage the, the projects. If, if the proposal is, is uh, implemented, like uh, funded, then you could you could uh, convert like the, the project to uh, uh, to uh, like you could you could start do the uh, activities you could do the indicators tracking spending plan so it's like uh, also you it helps you to not only acquire new proposal and new uh, funding but also it helps you to manage the report thank you so much i think I I'm thank you now. so much yeah that's is really great that you are like all the way from Yemen that this is so reachable and and this will be recorded so that you can also, like all the others can also uh, scroll through the slides and really zoom in there as well. Yop, uh, I give the floor to you. Thank you, Thank you so much, uh, Adele. Very, very, very impressive. And very so I, I would stop sharing. And then I think we, we go immediately to Leo, Lynn. And if we have time, we will still do some uh, final questions at the end of the session. Uh, Leo, do you want to present your presentation yourself or would you like Alina to present it? No, uh, I can just have Alina to help. That's totally fine. So, yeah. So, uh, thank you for the, you know, for the time and your participation. Uh, you know, I cannot guarantee you, you can really get a phone with my method, but I can guarantee you I can finish in 10 minutes. <laughs> and every time still have a time to do a Q&A. Um, so, you know, um, I'm country leader from uh, Taiwan, but I think that I also help the some fundraising job uh, in the Asia office. Uh, so uh, I just have some experience I can share with you. And so leverage what we sh learned so far, I think that's already technical and, you know, pe people here are really passionate. So that's why they share so much, even that's over time, but that's really exciting. So on my side, I would like to wrap up a little bit more meaning that I would just summarize something for you, for you to implement, um, you know, with some, with some philosophy in your mind. So next slide. So the way I'm doing it, just share simple, true story. Um, you know that actually uh, in the future, we probably have a, some a review uh, brand audit for our uh, partner for some funding, that sort of thing. So, um, so, so you know, we, we also, Taiwan actually earned the brand audit prize last year in uh, working up day. I mean, uh, let's do it networking, network. So uh, how did we do that, but still earn the sufficient fund to run our working up day? That's something I want to share here. So we really pay attention to our client, I mean, our partner re review. So two simple story. One is the really, I mean, significant success we have. Another is the failure. And you see that the success that I have a son, that definitely that the tie to shine, right? But interesting that for uh, for failure, I, I didn't put some negative sign, but I just put the moon. Why? Because I think that's a tie to ponder. That's a tie for you to stick. Because failure is nothing you should really wave. You should actually experience it and even enjoy it because you can learn from that failure to move on, perceive furthermore. So that's why I have a two story with you. I would like you to learn something from this case. So very first thing is about the successful story and what's the background and what's the story. You know, the successful story to make it simple, it just, uh, you know, it's a really successful, successful one because that's uh, relevant to both the, I mean, the volunteer mobilization and also funds. You know, we need the people and we also need the money, but we got the both and for long term. So I think that's a really successful story for me. And we got that just, uh, you know, three years ago. And since then we continue this cooperation. And that's a really, that's a, and a detail of this story is just, um, I mean, our partner is a leading financial holding company and they have a regular volunteer job and they have to do that every year. So we just try to figure out something we have, and you're just like the previous um, speaker shared that we just figure out what's their pain point, what's their benefit there, uh, like the con share. I mean, we figure out that and we think together and we have uh, what we have. So 
they have a regular uh, volunteer schedule. We worked with them saying that, why don't you just work with the worker update? I mean, I can provide something you need. They, they want to be well known among Asia. They want to promote some business regularly or to pr promote their brand among Asia in some way. So we actually uh, turned out to be a really good channel for them and a really soft way, but we can successfully reach a sufficient amount of people for them. So we work with them in that way. And you know that they just donate. Since then they donate, I mean, that's the first year, then they donate 6,500 and in the future they donate more. And with the exposure, they expecting more, they just add out much more. And you know that, um, they really care about whether they can have a people to work with them to get, uh, they really care about whether they employees actually do the volunteer on their own. So we don't really charge them on the service that we actually help them to, you know, set up, organize the logistic of the clean up. We didn't do that. All we do was just simply that, you know, I, I share with you the channel to expose yourself. And we thought that you have to do the logistic on your own because you want your people to do the volunteer on their own, to learn the volunteers. That's a really good partner. So we work with them. And end up with that, we just need to make sure that we have the marketing team to promote them. And we just have a really high donation from them. And that's our story for the first one, a successful one. But the failure is also important. Uh, that's an electronic company that we face. Uh, also, it's a, it's a it's an Asian wide. It's actually a global electronic company, and now it's will be well known uh, among Asia, even the world. Have some something about that. And for this one, uh, sorry, I cannot share the name for for some reason, but I mean they are really famous in some way, and we work with them. And uh, but this is a really, I mean, a really big example because you know at the very beginning they they donate around two thousand US dollar. And we thought that's a really great amount because that's our uh, very start. I mean, that's at the very beginning of our organization. So we think that's a really good start. So we work with them. But the problem came, you know, they, they love us. They have a patient about the, 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 the environment and the, the, the C, I mean, the, the one who hosts the CSR, I mean, the corporate social responsibility team. I mean, he, he really loved this. And he even do his, um, you know, uh, do his... Uh, his job, I mean, about the, 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 the environmental job. So he really have a patient and he, he promised us, us a lot that what kind of cooperation we can have in the future. And that's at a big, very beginning, we, we believe them because they, they have a, I mean, a, 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 some sort of huge amount of donation for us. But I mean, the bad news is that if they, they, they did pay, but the problem is that in the future, what I mean, all the cooperation, they promise and up with that, they didn't really realize it. They just let it be. Uh, they just let it go because they cannot really, uh, some, something happened on their side and their CEO didn't uh, approve it. So they cannot really run those, those things. But we, our team already spent a couple months, uh, especially to design the program for them. It's a whole year program. It ended up with more than 100,000 uh, cost for that one. So, you know, that's, that's what we expect, expected. Then that's a really horrible story. And, that, and now with that, we have no you know, resource to move on. And uh, our team will just really lost their morale. And may I, may I have a next slide? Yeah, so, you know, based on these two stories that I would just have a really simple top five takeaways and action plans. It's just really simple, but you can remember in your mind, first of all, is that, you know, figure out your overlapping job. I mean, between you and your partner, for example, my partner, the very successful one, they, they have a plan, you know, they, they, they have a regular volunteer job they want to do. But another electronic company, they don't have a that. They just want to do something. They have some startup they want to try, but they don't have a regular one. So we didn't really figure out overlapping. That's why the tragedy happened. And second, understand your partner. You know, the very first one, that's the, uh, the, the, the chairman of that leading financial institution. Uh, it's my, my friend. And uh, the, the CEO is also my friend. You know, this, if you notice know too, you can run everything, especially in financial institution. That's a really hierarchical, uh, hierarchical place. That means, I mean, everyone listens to both. 
So you just need to figure out who are the boss. And that's the culture. So it ended up with that I success, I, I succeed in that way because I understand my partner, that's my friend, and I know how they run the banking because uh, I'm a senior, I'm a management consultant, service only banking. So that's why I really know how to run with this one. But think about the other one. Electronic, definitely not my field, right? I'm not in my element. And second, you know, the organization is not like the finance. They don't really listen to their boss. So end up with that chairman didn't support it. And when they asked about the employees, his teammates, no one really support him as well. It's just like I talk, I mean, he has no one to support. So that's why you end up with the failure. And the third one is to talk to the right person. That's a little bit similar to the second one, but it would be more specific, like figure out what's the, you know, rent makers. Rainmaker may be someone with a high title if you talk to someone in a financial institution, but Rainmaker may be someone in the electronic company or like Google. You have to figure out someone didn't hold that position, but he is the, the person know a lot of department. They work, he, we, he or she will actually work with the different people, different organization, uh, or with the different stakeholder in that company. So you have to learn the culture. And second, you have to talk to the right person who is the Rainmaker. And the fourth, you know, touch and inspire them to your action. Think about this, you are doing something that may not be in their current CSR, I mean, their current business plan. That's impossible, you are doing something environmental. That won't be that kind of thing. But, prob but sometimes even worse, that you're, you're, you, what you are doing may not even in their CSR, I mean, corporate social responsibility plan. So. Only way you can do it, can really motivate them, is to touch them, inspire them through your action. So, you know, always show them what you've done and show them what you've achieved. Because for them, they really appreciate someone already did something. That's what I learned from the corporate. Uh, and very last one is to, you know, be aware of your morale. Think about this. Your team is always your best partner. Don't forget this, okay? You have, you have no team, you have no your friend in team, you have nothing. So always remember that. That's a five takeaway I want to share with you. And I think that's within 10 minutes. And if you have an, any more questions, just let me know. You know, I have an email, which I, I think I, yeah, I share in the chat now. So feel free to send me an email. Uh, I can just share with you more about how I achieve it, but just two simple story. You can tell that's a really good comparison, but just that you know you can uh, have some takeaway. Thank you. So I would like to thank our speakers. Very, very, very interesting. I think also it was like a good uh, combination of speakers on inspiration, on how to set up the organization, on how to actually manage uh, grant funding and uh, approach that. I think also uh, Adele would be very interesting to um, uh, explore your um, portal uh, for everyone, maybe also uh, on, a, on, a, on a global level with Let's Do It World, and then maybe also distribute that to a more national level. And also the tips and tricks from Leo on the field on corporate partnerships, very, very handy, very to the point. So thank you all very much. And uh, we can continue discussions in the conference lobby address to the chat so there is also now a conference um, a lobby where we can have like a cup of coffee together virtually so i hope to see you there thank you so much have a lovely uh, ongoing day with the conference and um, keep on cleaning the world thank you so much thank you